Hello race fans, Keith Collantine here. What can we expect from the new version of the official Formula 1 game? I've been playing a pre-release version of F1 2020 to find out, and in this video we're going to take a look at its key new features. Let's begin then by talking tracks and the two new additions to the calendar. It's important to note first of all, this is a pre-release version of F1 2020 that you're looking at. They aren't the final graphics, there's still some work and some bug fixing to be done by Codemasters in terms of how the game looks. Now, the season may be on hold, but in the virtual world at least, you will get to play with the full roster of 22 tracks. That includes the two new venues, Zandvoort, the home of the Dutch Grand Prix, which we're looking at now, and Hanoi in Vietnam. Now, as far as Zandvoort is concerned, Codemasters have been able to obtain the laser-scanned LiDAR data for the track, and they say that's helped them create a really realistic impression of what this renovated home of the Dutch Grand Prix is going to look like. We will take a much closer look at Zandvoort in another video, but as you can see, uh, pretty much everything is present and correct in terms of the changes to the circuit. Now, Hanoi is another new addition to the calendar for F1 2020. We're not allowed to show you the footage we've got of that just yet, but we can tell you about it. Hanoi, as you may have seen from the track illustrations, has got a lot of long straights, uh, a lot of big braking zones. Uh, it's really good from a racing point of view in terms of overtaking. But it's also got a really tricky little final sector uh, where the walls are hemmed in and it's very, very quick. It is extremely easy to swipe off a front wing at that part of the track. Uh, and it makes for a completely different challenge to Zandvoort. We'll tell you a little bit more about Hanoi in an upcoming video when we're able to. It isn't just the new tracks that Codemasters have been working on, however, they've also updated some of the old tracks and they've taken on board some of the feedback from real-world Formula One drivers about areas that the circuits could have been improved on. One particular area is the last sector at the circuit to Catalonia, including the elevation changes and the curbs around the final chicane. You can see those have been refined compared to F1 2019. Other tracks that Codemasters have addressed include Suzuka, where the notorious bump has apparently finally been fixed. Uh, we've not had a chance to play on that track yet, but obviously we'll take a look at that when the final game comes out. A key test for the accuracy of the new game is also going to be what they've done with the Circuit of the Americas, where the real-world track has had some bump-fixing work done since the end of 2019. Again, that's something we're going to have a look at when the final game comes out. Moving on, let's talk about the cars and the handling. Now, of course, as you'd imagine, F1 2020 has got the full roster of updated teams and drivers. That means Toro Rosso has become Alpha Tauri, Esteban Ocon's back, and we've got Nicholas Latifi in the Williams. And again, do keep in mind this is a pre-release version of the game, so not all of the car models and the liveries are complete. In terms of how the cars feel to drive, there have been some small but significant changes made to the fundamental driving dynamics this year. Codemasters say they've made massive gains with the modelling of the wheels and the tyres. This has come in two areas. One of them is the way the inertia is calculated and also the way the tyre pressures affect the temperatures of the surface and the carcass. We tested this using a well-worn Logitech G27 wheel and pedal set and also with a brand new Fnatic Elite F1 kit and with the assistance turned off I definitely had a more progressive feel on the brake pedal and lockups were more predictable and easier to avoid but I'm far from being a top level sim racer and so I'm keen to see what the elite drivers make of these changes. Again, Codemasters have also been listening to what the real world Formula 1 drivers have been telling them about the driving experience at the wheel. One change they've made to the energy recovery system came following some feedback from Lando Norris. The ERS has actually been simplified slightly in F1 2020. You now have a three stage setting for the ERS instead of five and also an overtake button. That may be more gamey, but Codemasters say it also makes it more realistic. In terms of how it plays at the wheel, it's basically as you'd expect. You jab the button and you've got an IndyCar style push to pass overtaking boost. But the biggest change on the driving side is the new casual driving mode that's been introduced. This is very much aimed at first time players and introduces a range of additional aids that make it simpler for them to get used to the driving experience. For example, it makes the off track areas less punishing, so if you go onto the grass or the gravel it's much easier to rejoin the track. And if that is too tricky, you've also got an automatic reset to track function to get you out of tight spots quickly like those notorious runoff areas in Baku. You've also got AI-assisted steering to make it a little bit easier to get around the track in the first place. 
Now, there's a couple of important things to note about this casual driving mode. First of all, it's not available online because some of those assistances would make it a bit easier for you to exploit different areas on the track. And also, the standard driving mode from all the previous game remains completely unchanged, except for the addition of a few new optional assists. There is now an auto DRS option, and there's also automatic fuel mix management if you need that as well. But if you found a way of driving the game that you really liked from F1 2019, it's still going to be there in F1 2020. There have also been a few detail changes to how the game looks and feels while you're playing. Last year, PC players got the chance to customise their heads-up display. That option has now been extended so that PlayStation 4, Xbox, and for the first time Google Stadia players can do the same thing. Uh, a virtual rear view mirror has now been added, so you can have that at the top and centre of your screen if you prefer. And you'll also notice Formula 1 sponsor AWS's television graphics making an appearance for the first time as they do in the television broadcasts. Now, I know from reading your comments and questions that a lot of you are keen to find out more about the new My Team mode in F1 2020. I'm also looking forward to learning more about it as well. Unfortunately, it wasn't available for us to play in this preview version. However, we have found out a few new details about My Team which we can share. First of all, for those of you who may not know, My Team will allow you to create your own 11th team in F1 2020. You'll be able to manage its resources, expand its facilities, and of course, drive one of the cars. You'll hire a driver to race the other car. You can pick those from the 2019 Formula 2 roster to begin with. The 2020 Formula 2 drivers and teams are going to be added later on. And further into the game, you might get the opportunity to hire a Formula 1 driver from one of your rivals. Whether you can do that will depend partly on how well your team performs, it will also depend on how much money you're able to bring in. You'll be able to hire sponsors, these will all be fictional, you'll also get to design your team's livery and badge and facilities and so on. So my team basically adds a new resource management level to the game and also brings a new degree of flexibility to the driver lineup which isn't in the standard career mode. Like in career mode, you also have to answer questions now from official F1 presenter Will Buxton who's been added into the game, and your answers to those questions shape your team. So the My Team mode promises to offer lots of new features that fans were keen to see, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays in the final game. What about the career mode which was introduced in last year's game? As you can imagine, there have been a few changes, but most of the main development has gone on my team. Both of these modes run over 10 seasons, but now in F1 2020, you'll be able to specify shorter 10 or 16 race championships with races of your choice instead of the full 22. You'll also get the chance to add power unit upgrades to your car for the first time during the course of the season, and you'll also have the opportunity to accelerate the development of certain parts of your car. However, there may be a reliability price to pay for doing that. The contract negotiations have also been made a bit more sophisticated. You can now enter negotiations with multiple teams, and you've got the chance to renegotiate your existing team contracts. One big change that you will also notice in the career mode is that the characters Lucas Webber and Devon Butler, who were introduced to last year's game, are not back in F1 2020. However, we understand there's a chance that them or someone like them will come back in next year's game. For more details on F1 2020 and lots of new video of the game, head over to racefans.net now. We wanted to know what racefans readers were most keen to find out about the game, so we've answered dozens of your questions there. We also spoke at length to Codemasters game developer Lee Mather to find out more about what's changed in F1 2020 and what Codemasters have planned for the future development of the official Formula 1 game. Thanks very much to Codemasters for inviting us to play the preview version of the game, and thanks also to our hardware suppliers Logitech and Fnatic for sending over steering wheels and pedals, and thanks also to Nvidia. All the video you've just watched was produced on a GeForce RTX 2080 Titanium graphics card. Make sure you're following at racefans.net on Twitter and on Facebook for lots more coverage of F1 2020, and of course, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube because we've got plenty more video coming here as well. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching.